I believe it's the name of the Venetian boat song, the uh, gondola song number two, opus 30, number six. I think the challenge is that relentless left ten, which is in a very bright part of the piano here, heavy part of the piano. You want to make sure you get this relentless rocking motion, and you have to lift up the second half of the measure so you do get the what's called duple compound, which is leaning more to the first half of the measure, lifting the second. That'll give you a, more of the boat feeling of a boat on, on the water. And the way I accomplish that is with ro a lateral rotation, such as this. because this pattern goes all the way through. Of course, it goes into different uh, parts of the piano and it goes into dominance of this is F-sharp minor. It goes has some places where that gets a little bit stretched out over more octaves where you have this. You know, where you'll have bigger jumps from the bass. And, and then, of course, we have places where um, we have even bigger jumps, such as, uh, look at uh, where it gets to the climax of this piece, where we jump a tenth, and then we go up here, and then we have another tenth. Those are tricky, those tenths on the second page. Anyway, you still want to have that lateral motion. You want to have any twisting of your elbows. Um, because that's going to get in the way and you know, hurt yourself beside. Now the balance between the hands, of course, is um, try to keep this down in the left hand because otherwise it's going to drown out this gorgeous melody. When I see several of the same C sharps, like one, two, three, one, two, three, four times, almost five, because it goes over the measure with different note values, and some are dotted quarters and some are dotted quarters attached to quarter, making it a tie. When I go into several of these, I have to make them different colors. Like if I play the violin, I would, you know, take my bow and I would go deeper and a little vibrato and then lighter and then delay my bow on one of them. Well, the equivalent on the piano is entering some of these notes slower and also varying your arm weight. So that little space in measure six where you're going... Crescendo. Now I'll do day crescendo. Now I and I can come down from there. And then here's another tie. Delay it. Crescendo. Push. And that's where I see an SFZ. I don't want to in the romantic genre want to have the punchy sound. If I see an SFZ, which is bring out sudden big bring out. Forte with a little bit of extra emphasis. I push into it. Push, push. So I get this here. Push, push. As opposed to up and down fingers. And that gives you a singing tone. It gives you the beautiful, lush, bigger sound without an offensive, punchy, turfy sound. Because after you come out of that, and that's measure 13, where you have this dominant, this is the dominant in the left hand, the C-sharp major, seven chord, when you get this. And you can come down. And you know, you don't want to think note, note, note. You want to think roll to the Roll to learn again, no. Maybe this time less. Something different, anyway. They go in and out. And especially if you have measures 17 and 18, I don't think of two beats in one measure and two beats in another. That's a longer line. That's just one long line. One long line, even continuing to the cadence. So, well, you have to think about these things. Repeated notes, they can't all be the same. Different colors, different entries into the note, different arm weights, and so forth. And then when you see long strings of these 
eighth notes, like for many, many measures, you want to just think one long phrase down, one long phrase. Now this next section, which is... <laughs> cheat a little. You cheat a little because the pedal is holding down both of the notes for you, so you can yield the two to the top one. You'll still have the E sharp. is tricky because it could mine sounded a little too flat because it does say start soft on the trill swell it out and then pull it back it's kind of, kind of hard to do but you could do it if you practice some slow trills let's say you do measure trills maybe four thirty seconds to each eighth slowly like this <laughs> I would practice it. See? Pull it back and go forward. Then you get more control that way. You can do side to side too. In and out, you know, so the trill doesn't sound flat. And then of course this this measure 39 suddenly has two voices. Has a top voice now. We heard this before without a top voice. We have other trills here at the end they're shorter it is one measure and they're shorter and it's suddenly it says sf it's hard to do an sf once you start an f trill they want you to go to sf unless they're referring to the left hand no it's the right hand it just means a little bit more on the trill and 50 and then diminuendo but just give it a little bit more arm weight when you get to this more arm weight now control the end of that trill. There's another one. Falling. Delay. Now what you do at the end, you finally have, it says an open crescendo. It's very interesting how you do that ending. It's quite, quite tricky with all these shorter trills. Um, that are boxed in a little bit. So, so you can see, you have to have the relentless, uh, kind of an ostinato left hand, I call it, because it's so redundant in terms of the way it distributes these broken kind of chords. You play it faster, you can get the expression as long as this hand is sort of this undertow of rocking motion, and the other hand is lyrical. <laughs> 